أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأعز المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المنتجبين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all praises be to Him, everlasting and omniscient He is. We begin in His name and we send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household and our everlasting damnation upon the enemies of Muhammad and on Muhammad. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. إنما المؤمنون إخوة فاصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون صدق الله وصدق رسوله رسوله الكريم My dear brothers and sisters, please bless this occasion and bless this majlis from your homes, from wherever you are with a salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad اللهم صل على محمد وآلي محمد my dear brothers and sisters, I begin with the greeting of Islam by saying Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I congratulate you on two occasions. The first of that being the occasion that marks the crescent of the sacred month of Sha'ban. And secondly, I also congratulate you and I congratulate Sahib Al Amr and the Muslims and the Maraj and everybody on the auspicious occasion that marks the sacred births of Al Hussein ibn Ali, Al Abbas ibn Ali, and Ali ibn Al Hussein al Sajjad, peace be upon them all. As you know, Sha'ban's third and fourth and fifth mark the blessed birth of the heroes of Karbala, and the 15th of Sha'ban marks the blessed birth of Sahib al Amr, Arwahuna li Turabi Makdamihi al Fida. I begin first things first before dwelling into our discussion by saying that since we are in the month of Sha'ban and I have of course a narration or two that I've prepared and you know what to, to be in order to save time the narration of course I'll tell you right now it's from Man La Yahdarahu Al-Faqih of Shaykh Al Sadduq Radwanullah Ta'ala Alay and it concerns just some of the benefits of fasting because from the main a'mal that you know when it comes to Sha'ban amongst them among these a'mal first of them is Ziyarat al Hussein ibn Ali peace be upon him do the Ziyarat of Hussein as much as you can and we said last time during our live broadcast from Imam al-Kadhim alayhi salam the importance of Ashura and I will comment on that later inshallah if we have time so do not neglect the Ziyarat of Hussein do not neglect the fasting in this month especially especially Try to fast the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th. And try to fast, if you can, the last three days of Sha'ban and connect them with the first day of Ramadan because the reward in that is also great. And I encourage you to go back to the traditions of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, in order that you discover the reward of fasting. And also, my dear brothers and sisters, especially since the time we are facing right now, this crisis that is going around the world, world this COVID-19 virus this bala'un azim but at the same time tan, at the same time imtihanun, imtihanun azim it is a grave bala it is a grave test it is a grave affliction at the same time it's an affliction and it's a test as well for us all sadaqah is very important in Sha'ban sadaqah by all means sadaqah in every single no matter how you look at sadaqah it is good Either you are helping a brother in need and today our discussion is about maintaining ties with your brothers and sisters, maintaining ties with your family members and in general helping one another. Helping one another, Amru bil ma'roof, in the sense of ma'roof as doing a kind favor, a good act, all of it is sadaqah. And the narrations that I have here, but I won't, be, I won't narrate, but just to tell you I have here with me Furu' al-Kafi. Volume 4, the chapter of Sadaqah. If you were just to go and read merely the chapters, the chapters, I'm not even asking God to reread all, 
just the chapters to see how much benefit there is in sadaqah. So do perform sadaqah, either you put a dollar aside, a pound aside, a penny aside, whatever you have, whatever you may. And if you don't have money to put aside, the traditions tell us an istighfar, right? Or you do a two-unit rak'ah hadiyya for somebody, for example, for a loved one, for somebody who is needing of that prayer. Recite a Surah Qur'an, Surah Yasin for your loved ones. All of this is, falls under the, the category or falls under Afwan. The umbrella of Sadaqah and the umbrella of performing Ma'roof, of performing good. Now going back to the ayah in the Qur'an. The ayah in the Qur'an, it says that in, in Surah Al-Hujarat, uh, verse 10, <coughs> it says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَصْرِحُوا It says the brothers... The believers are but brothers, then make settlement, reconcile between your fellow brethren, and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. It is from this Quranic uh, verse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's holy Quran, holy scripture, that I decided to talk about the importance of brotherhood and the importance of, we'll, we'll discuss later, we'll discuss I believe four or five main main reasons or you can say uh, five acts or you can say five characteristics that a brother should have towards his fellow brother that you should do during these times because we live in a very difficult we live in very difficult difficult times currently you know we don't have we used to for example say the majalis that we used to have used to be used to be public and used to be many people used to come over and we used to mix and everything and of course due to the circumstances but alhamdulillah though this is, means that the the light of Al Muhammad is still alive, you know, through your mobile phones, through your laptops, uh, through if you're connected right now, driving, listening through your radio, or if you're at work and you have your headphones in your ears, if you're working from home. Alhamdulillah, technology has been able to bring us all together, and we will mention that. But it is, it is from this ayah in the Quran and the importance of brotherhood that I wanted to, to talk about this, this, this topic here or this discussion. This discourse that we're having, this front discourse, is that do not sever the ties just because you are not able to connect with your fellow brother, for example, physically. You're not able to be for, with them physically. And by the way, when I say brotherhood, I mean sisterhood at the same time. Brotherhood is defined as a group or an organization which holds the same ideals and the same values. So that's what I mean by brethren. So that's why from this ayah in the Qur'an and its grave importance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pushes towards us. Because we see from the ahadith and from the Qur'anic text, we see and from the prophetic quotes and traditions that brotherhood, especially brotherhood that is through faith, brotherhood through religion, it is something else different than any other interaction that you may have. The interaction that you have with your, with your fellow brother, the interaction that the sister has with her fellow sister. These are blessings. These are, it, it's a, it really is a connection. I can say for myself, by the way, that there are some, of, there are some uh, connections that I have made with some fellow brothers of mine that... Uh, that, that we made, by the way, over social media, you can say a while back, six, seven years ago, and then they all materialized where? They materialized under the love and the dome of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Under the dome of Hussein, most of my friendships, my strongest friendships that I currently have, we met online somewhere through because we shared specific ideals, specific values, and we were all brothers, we were all under the same umbrella, under that umbrella of, of the wilayah of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And then it materialized where? It materialized under that Qubba al-Muqaddasa, under that sacred dome of Aba Abdullah al Hussein in Karbala. And I can say the strongest friendships I have, the brothers that I keep on a daily basis, the one that I trust with my back and my soul and my heart, are the ones that are out there. I'm not undermining the blood relationship between a brother, but even the blood relationship that you have between your fellow brethren, that relationship alone is a relationship that is actually stronger or it becomes stronger through what? It becomes stronger through your own faith. Which is why when we look at the narrations concerning brotherhood, 
the rights concerning brotherhood. When you look at Rasat al Hukuk, for example, and you begin to analyze what the Imam as Sajjad said concerning brotherhood, you will find that brotherhood in Islam is one that is bilateral and not unilateral. What does that mean? Meaning, whatever happens to you as a brother affects your fellow brethren. Whatever happens to you affects your fellow brother. That's the true brother. The true brother. The true brother is that when you are hurt, he's hurt, and vice versa. When you have a hajj and a request, and you wish for that hajj and request to be fulfilled, he also will fulfill it, and he will not delay it, for example. If you feel there is a pain and suffering for your brother, you know, he's going through hardship, he's going through depression, you are there for your brother. A brother does not blame a fellow brother. A brother undergoes the same treatment, the same way I would treat my own brothers in blood, I treat my brothers in faith, my dear brothers and sisters. It's a very, very, we can say, a very strong, strong connection. And then also, I wish to also quote this, when I say brotherhood as well, Yes, me and my fellow brothers in Islam, my believers, we are brothers when it comes to faith. But do not neglect the brotherhood that arises from what? From humanity. And since we are facing a humanitarian crisis currently at this moment, this is the time of ud'u ila nasi bighayri al-sinatikum. This is the time that you call upon your Lord. Call to the way of your Lord without the use of your tongue. This is the time where our akhlaq should shine. This is the time that we ought to help the fellow communities. It doesn't matter what they believe in. They're disbelievers. They're Ahlul Kitab from the Christian and the Jews. They're Hindu, Sikh, they're whatever they may be. This is the time for you to lend a hand. This is not the time for you to say he's not my brother. In faith, how should I call him? No, he's your brother in humanity. You're allowed to call him your brother. Your brother, he's your brother in humanity. And that is why in letter 53 in Nahj al balaghah the letter that Imam Ali alayhi salam, this letter that has wisdom unlike any other letters of Imam Ali alayhi salam, the one that is narrated in the peak of eloquence, Imam Ali, ruhi wa arwahu al lahu al-fida, the commander of the faithful, gives us a principle, Allah. He tells us, he says to him, he says to Malik, إِمَّا أَخٌ لَكَ فِي الدِّينِ وَإِمَّا نَظِيرٌ وَإِمَّا الأخن لَكَ فِي الدِّينِ وَإِمَّا نَظِيرٌ لَكَ فِي الْخَلْقِ يُفَرِّطُ مِنْهُمُ الزَّلَلُ وَتَعْرُضُ لَهُمُ الْعِلَلُ إلى آخر الحديث He says to him, O oh Malik, the people that you're going to be governing in Egypt, yes, they'll have mistakes, some of them will fall, some of them will rise. Know this, O oh Malik! They are either your brother in faith or what? Your equal in humanity or one like you in creation. They will commit slips and encounter mistakes. They may act wrongly, willfully or by neglect. So extend to them your forgiveness and pardon. In the same way as you would like Allah to extend His forgiveness and pardon. He says this to Malik. Radiallahu an Malik al Ashtar, one of the greatest companions of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Whatever you wish for yourself, you wish for your for your brother. We hear this by the way as well in the in the in the wisdom of our Prophet, our dear and beloved Prophet, Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him. He always says, Do unto you how you would like to do upon others. The same way you want to you to want to be treated. With kindness, treat others with kindness. It is from this door, from this bab, that we want to focus on some of the importance when it comes to brothers. Did you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that there is a narration in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and I, and I hope you guys will go back to this narration. You'll find it translated in English on Islam.org. Just write 30 qualities. 30 rights towards your brother that you must fulfill and for those, for those who want the source to go to the source material in Arabic you'll find it in Kenzul Fawaid of Al-Karajiki volume 1 page 360, 306 
In this one, Rasulullah says the Muslim has upon his brother, his, 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 his fellow Muslim brother, ثلاثون حقا لا براءة له منها. You have 30 rights that you must fulfill towards your brother that you should not neglect. There is no way for neglect for these 30 rights that you must fulfill for your fellow brother. And the same applies to the non-Muslim, by the way. You'll find many times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to mankind, speaks to his creation. It is not just always say, especially the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil-alameen. This is the time for you to show what, it, what the true teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. This is the time for you to truly sit, not just sit back, sorry. I was going to say sit. No, you, you shouldn't be just sitting. This is the time for you to the best of your ability, if you can, to help those in need, to help those in the community in need. And of course, it is through that, like we said, it is, it is because of the Quranic verse that we quoted and the fact that Rasulullah is rahmatan lil alameen and the fact that either you either man is either your equal in faith or or equal in humanity it is from that that we wish to talk about the some of the some of the rights that you should fulfill to your fellow brothers and sisters now most of the most of the ahadith that i will be quoting today comes from kitab al kafi I believe I have it right here. Yes, yeah, sorry, right here. Kitab al Kafi. And most of them you'll find in Usul al Kafi. You, uh, you'll find them uh, in volume two. Uh, I, I believe just around. If you go to, if you just, if you Google Usul al Kafi volume two, English, Arabic, you'll find them all, by the way. And just, I want you to take time today. And I want you just to go, by the way, just, just again, just go through the, through the glossary and just begin to read just some of the titles of the of the chapters right like some of them that we have here for example you know at amal mu'min right man kasa mu'minan right bab man man bab fi khidmati bab nasihat al mu'min bab fi ihya al mu'min bab fi du'a li ahli al iman so a chapter that that talks about feeding the believer a, a chapter that talks about clothing the believer a chapter that talks about advising the believer and so on and so forth a never ending list and my dear brothers and sisters, these majalis especially, these majalis, so we begin with this, with this first, the first um, hadith you can say. And again, we're, we're summarizing inshallah because we don't want to take too much of your time. I know some of you are working, and some of you may be busy. I myself have taken a break, my lunch break, and I'm, and I'm trying to present this as much as I can in the limit and the time limit that I have as well. The Majalis of Al Muhammad, the Fada'il of Al Muhammad. Stay connected, yes. Connection is very important, and especially through the means of social media. But try to make a jalsa, try to make a gathering every week or so where you connect either using Google Hangouts, using Instagram, using FaceTime, Vroom, whatever application you enjoy using, Microsoft Teams, that's the one that we use for our work. And, and then share between each other. Narrations of Al Muhammad. Why do I say this? I say this because Imam Al Baqir says, Our narrations, our traditions soften the heart. Our traditions bring the believers close to one another. And then the Imam says, By Allah, I love your aroma. By Allah, I love your souls because you have gathered together and you discuss our narration, you discuss our merits. So it's very important that you use the means that you have to not sever the ties, the ties of your friendship. Try your best to, to, to stay in touch. And like we said, there are many things. Stay in touch with the mu'min, helping the believer either through food, through money, through a salam. We will look some, at some of the ahadith. First of these, using social media, right? Like this live stream right now as a means of spreading knowledge and gaining benefit. So the Prophet in the Hadith here, the Prophet ﷺ informs us that the believer or the brother is he who benefits his fellow brothers. So what better, what better way for you to stay connected than to stay connected and benefit each other, advise each other. So he says, 
One of the hadith from Imam Sadiq first, and then from Rasulullah. Actually, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is first. In the Quran, "Man istafada akhan fi Allah kana lahu zahiran ala al-sirat." Whoever provides benefit to his fellow brother, and in, in this in this time of age, through, for example, social media, like I said, through these live streams, through a WhatsApp message, an iMessage, a text message, and his brother, his fellow brother, benefits from this then the passing on the Salat is something easy. The Salat that is very difficult will be very easy for them. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, إِنَّهُ قَالْ مَنِ اسْتَفَادَ أَخَنْ مَنِ اسْتَفَادَ أَخَنْ فِي اللَّهِ بَنَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ There you go. Any benefit that you give your fellow brethren, that they benefit from, a hadith, a hikmah, wisdom, and they don't say here when it comes to religion, by the way. He says, استفاده, فائدة, any فائدة. Maybe you're helping an individual with their homework, for example, other brothers that are right now not in school. Maybe, for example, you're helping, you're helping your fellow brother. The, 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 it's endless what we, what, we begin, we, what we can narrate when it comes to advice and when it comes to benefit. There you go. You help a fellow brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds for you a house in paradise. Inshallah. Another one of the categories in, 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 in Kitab al-Kafi is the title of bringing joy to your fellow brethren and this specifically in this time in this era that we live in that some people you might not know because they might not express you know their 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 you can say their sadness or affliction and we're not saying go and, and, and call them up and say, well, are you sad? No, no. You just bring joy to them. You bring joy to them by, by sharing what we call halal banter. <laughs> halal, halal comedy. You know, it could take anything from just the, you know, we, we, live, in the, we live in the era of, of, of memes, you know. I, mashallah, I have some friends who are, who are professionals when it comes to memes. All it takes is, is, a, is a message, by the way. is a message, you know. And you, you don't have to, when you're sending the message, don't be, oh, okay, I'm sending this to make you feel good. No, 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 that's not how it works. You just check up on them. You check up on them by, by saying, Salaamu Alaikum, and you're like, oh, look at this, something funny happened here, you know, and then you guys start sharing. This, this alone has benefit. So it says here, في صحيحة أبي حمزة الثماني قال سمعت أبي جعفر عليه السلام يقول قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله من سر مؤمنا فَقَدْ سَرَّنِي وَمَنْ سَرَّنِي فَقَدْ سَرَّ اللَّهِ There you go. That's why it's important to maintain ties, my dear brothers and sisters. Abu Hamza Tumali narrates from Abu Ja'far al-Baqir, peace be upon him, who says the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, said, whoever brings joy to the believer, to your fellow brother, your brethren, your sister, whoever it may be, for he has brought joy to me. And whoever brings joy to me, has brought joy to the Almighty, meaning what? Meaning you have attained the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how simple it is. Making somebody laugh, especially during this time when we need to stay connected so that depression does not fall upon us. It's very difficult times for some people. Very, very difficult times for some people. And all it takes is a simple message sometimes, you know. Sometimes when I receive a message from one of my brothers, I swear to you, I cannot begin to explain the joy that I have. And I, only, and I believe the same thing happens when I send them a message, for example. Either a celebration, for example, the celebrations that we are celebrating today, as an example. Send them a, a congratulations on the celebration of the Imams, peace, peace be upon them. All of this is to your benefit. We said, of course, halal banter, and there are a lot of ahadith as well in Kitab al-Kafi. You can go back and, and look at how Rasulullah used to do that with his companions. It's just there's a lot of stories, but we don't want to, there's, there's not a lot of time. There's a lot of stories and a lot of information, but there's not a lot of time. Now, somebody may ask, what about the writing letters? Of course, in this day and age, we don't write letters. But I found this to be very interesting, because I also came across this hadith in Kitab al-Kafi. Sahihati Abdullah ibn Sinan an Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. Qal raddu jawab al-kitabi wajibun ka wujubi radd salam The Imam here says, if somebody writes a letter, to you, it is incumbent upon you and obligatory upon you to answer that letter. The same way that it is obligatory upon the individual to answer what? The Islamic greeting. And in different hadith here, Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, said that he says, 
والتزاور وفي السفر التكاتب He says that in times when the brothers are close, you visit them. And in times when the brothers are far away, you write letters to them. It applies to our time today, because we can't really visit our brothers due to the, to the circumstances. So what do we do? Instead of that, we write letters. But of course, we're not going to go, if you mean, by all means, if you like writing letters, it's beautiful. You work on your calligraphy, why not? Calligraphy and transcription is a beautiful sunnah of our predecessors. But write a letter, write a WhatsApp message, say, Assalamu Alaikum. He says here, the, 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 the Imam says, that's how the brothers would visit back in the day. They would write letters. Another one of these ahadith is one concerning removing grief, pain, and affliction from your brother. And here in this hadith, the uh, Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, says, whoever does this, who removes, who assists an individual in removing grief, in removing his anxiety, sickness, or anything else than that, the Imam salam says, Kataballahu Azza wa Jalla lahu bidalika thantayni wa sab'een rahmah min Allah yuj'alu lahu minha wahidatan wahidatan yuslihu biha amra ma'ishatah wa yadkhiru lahu ihda wa sab'een rahmah li ifza'a yawm al-qiyamah wa ahwaluhu wa ahwalihi He says, whoever removes grief that a fellow brother is facing fellow brother, fellow sister, whoever you may be, your fellow brother, whoever removes grief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them 72, you can say, units or shares of rahmah. Allah will take this rahmah and give one to that individual to use in this world in order that he solve the issues and the, issue and the problems that he has in this world. So whatever matters he may have, يَصْلَحُ أُمُورِهِ He reconciled his matters, he reconciles his matters. And Allah will leave the other 72, so sorry, okay, 71 for the Day of Judgment. On that Day of Judgment when people are pushing and shoving, just like we see today in the stores from the panic buyers, pushing and shoving and grabbing and so on and so forth. The pain, the pain, the pain of the Day of Judgment, by the way, it's severe. Maybe, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us in Ramadan, inshallah, Ramadan, we can speak about this. Because the Day of Judgment is not, a, it's not a, like a matter to be taken not serious. It's a serious matter, the Day of Judgment. Rasulullah, the Imam here says that whoever does this, Allah removes from them and aids them by placing these 71 remaining units on the Day of Judgment for that fellow believer who removed pain from his fellow brother and sister. This hadith is also narrated in Kitab al-Kafi, uh, page 440 of my vol uh, My edition is the one from Musu'at al-Kutub al-Arba'a. So you guys could have various different editions. We're running very, very close uh, to, to the end, insha'Allah. Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I'm hoping you guys are doing the salawat back in home, inshallah. Because uh, that's what I'm expecting when I say salawat. And today is Friday. So increase your salawat as much as you can. And of course, there are there is many more traditions, my dear brothers and sisters. Like I said, go back to Kitab al-Kafi and read and read. And you'll find that uh, the rights you have towards your brothers, wherever, whatever it may be. You know, helping them out, lending them a hand. Uh, if they require assistance in anything, by the way, uh, like doesn't sometimes be like, oh well, I don't know what to do, I don't know how to help. Anything, anything that you have in this time of need, you know, it's 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 there's reward behind it. It's and it all falls under the act of ma'roof and al ma'arif and ma'roof is sadaqa. Doing good is sadaqa and sadaqa al sadaqa tadfa'ul bala. Charity removes affliction. And in the time that we are living in currently today, we're, we're facing affliction. We're facing this, this, this pandemic, this waba that is rampant all over. And uh, sadaqa and, and, and doing these acts to, with your fellow brethren, either they be your fellow brothers in, in Islam and believers in Islam or your fellow brothers in in the community, the elders in the community, for example, all of this falls under ma'roof, doing good, 
doing a favor. And when you do something as well, that our generations teach us, when you do something, when you are doing these acts of kindness, do it and just walk away as well. The Imam very much emphasizes, you know, that that's why we find in some of the chapters that performing uh, sadaqah at night is even more grand than performing it during the day, giving sadaqah to the fellow. And we see by this from the lives of our Imams, Imam al Hussein, for example, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein, for example, did not say, Oh, I'm Sayyid, I'm Hashimi, I'm bigger and better than you. It's narrated, for example, that one day Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was walking and there was a group of, of uh, poor individuals who were sitting and eating. They invited him and they were eating from a sadaqah that somebody else gave them. And then they, they told him, Ya Ba Abdullah, come join us. You know, and he was standing and they were sitting. The Imam right away s sat on the floor and he said, Allah does not like those who are high and mighty. So he sat on the floor. He said to them, I cannot eat from your sadaqah, but I invite you to come to my house and eat with me. He, they, they all went with him, they went to his house, and then they had a meal all together. That's why, by the way, Ramadan is coming, hint, hint, to the fellow brothers out there, inshallah, when the time comes. Feeding your fellow brothers and sisters, by the way, is great. So bring on the azaim together, inshallah. Because it creates a, 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 a beautiful atmosphere, a serene atmosphere, in your fellow brothers. And we see the same concerning Imam Sajjad, alayhi salam. Ali ibn al Hussein al-Sajjad, peace be upon him. And uh, we see that uh, uh, after his martyrdom, Ruhi lahu al fida when they were washing his body, they noticed there was um, wounds on his back, almost like uh, wounds under the skin and, and other wounds due to the scratches and marks. And then when they asked about this, of course, and they were, they inf when the people washing his body, the Imam was there and people were seeing this. When they asked the Imam, Imam al-Baqir, they, they, he informed them that my father used to go out in the middle of the night and carry sacks of... And with these sacks would be pieces of bread and, and other non-perishables, you know, wheat and barley and so on and so forth. So the gist of, of our talk today, inshallah, is, is whatever you do, your ties with your brothers, do not ever sever them. And understand that the ties that you have with your fellow brothers and sisters, and I know I'm looking at the clock right now, we're running close to the, to the end, inshallah, because we were aiming for 35 to a maximum of 40 minutes. So... We don't want to take too much of your time. During this time, it's important, like I said, maintaining these ties with your fellow brothers, inshallah, and helping one another. You know, one of our dear brothers was telling us that he, he, was, he, he signed up to volunteer, for example, to help drive around supplies, you know, to the, to the hospitals. Um, other brothers I know and sisters are volunteering to try to help in some of the testing facilities that are happening around. Other brothers and sisters that I know, I've been informed that they were trying to help as much as they can with groceries for the elderly, for example. All of this is ma'roof. Inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us, next week we can talk more about the rights of your neighbors and those around you and give more examples from history on, on the way the Prophet used to act also, as well with the non-Muslims. Because by the way, everything falls under the acts. Everything today, everything that's happening right now is, is humanitarian. We, we're living in a time where... All of this is a humanitarian crisis. So anything you do to lend your hand to help your fellow brothers is a blessing. And do not let the time go to waste as well. We said that last time, by the way. Do not let this time go to waste. You know, Do whatever you have to do, but try to specify a time. Imam Ali always says, you know, Make sure you, you share your time accordingly and schedule your time accordingly. Do not let it go to waste. Like we, we find if we look back at our scholars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their souls of those who have passed and keep those who are with us today. You'll find Alam al-Hilli, for example. Alam al-Hilli, while riding his mule, it is said, he used to keep on riding even when traveling. And it is said that nobody could understand his writing except his son. We have another example, and we will end with this example, insha'Allah. We have the example uh, of the Shaheed, Sayyid Hassan. Sayyid Hassan uh, al-Shirazi. It is said that, as you know, Sayyid Hassan al-Shirazi was executed by, by the Ba'thi regime, by, by Saddam al-La'in, on his, on his way to, to a, a funeral. 
in Lebanon for Sayyid Muhammad Baqir al-Sadr. And Sayyid Hassan was known to make frequent trips between Syria and to Lebanon and so on and so forth. It is said that during his trips he would always be writing. He would always be writing and he would use anything he had. Like even just a, like a, a piece of paper, he would start writing around the edges of the piece of paper. You know, a cigarette box, he would write around the edge of the cigarette. Whatever he had, he would use after writing. And it is said that after his passing, after his martyrdom by the hands of the Ba'thi Rajim, they gathered all of his writings and they, they had a, a massive bag of writings. And they were able to, to, to actually publish a book. I forgot the name of the book. But they were able to publish a, a, a small book from these writings, from these footnotes and, and comments that the Sayyid was writing. Take advantage of this time, inshaAllah. The many scholars you'll find, the great scholars, Sayyid al khui for example, Rahmatullahi alayhi, Sahib al kifaya al akhund al Khurasani, and others, my dear brothers and sisters, the publications that they wrote were all during their time of isolation. And again, maintain your ties, do not sever them. And also, Ziyarat Ashura. I cannot emphasize this enough. I tried, inshallah, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll send this message out to you guys right now that I had an idea when it comes to reciting Ziyarat Ashura. I shared it with some brothers and sisters. And that is that we will do a program and we'll try to formulate this and share it as well and make a poster so all you can see. Calling it hashtag the Ashura Initiative. The Ashura initiative is like this, and this is my message. The Ashura initiative is that as much people as they can participate, and each individual participates by reading Ashura daily to the best of their ability, and gifting Ashura, the ziyarah, to the mother of our Imam, Sahib Al Amr, Sayyid Narjis, peace be upon her, especially since his Mawlud is coming as well. Everybody participates in the ziyarah. No matter how much, the, the more numbers we have, the better. So, for example, let's say ten people are participating in this in this ziyarah, in this program. If I don't recite today, I have nine other people reciting it and gifting it to say the nargis. If I have a hundred people participating, and thirty of them are not, you have the other seventy participating and reciting it and gifting it to say the nargis. So the more people we can have, and you can start this today, by the way. Start this today. Whoever, wherever you may, may be watching, start this today, inshallah. And begin to recite Ashura to the best of your ability. Even if you have it on a recording, listening to it, for example, while you're driving, while you're doing your workouts at home, while you're taking a walk, or with the family at night, inshallah. No matter where you are, please, the benefits of Ashura is unimaginable. The benefits of Ashura and we've heard the stories and we narrated the stories. So do not cut your ties with your Imam, especially in the month of Sha'ban, especially during these weeks that will lead up to the birth of Sahib al-Amr, arwahuna li turabi maqdamihi al-fida. And now my dear brothers and sisters, we begin with our dua as we begin to conclude our talk. And, I f and please forgive me all if I have wronged you, forgive me for my shortcomings. And I pray um, this talk has been of benefit, insha'Allah. And we begin by saying, Ya Allah, again, we say, Ya Allah, ten times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Labbayka, Ya Abdi. What is your request? We say, Ya Allah, 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 Ya Allah. إلهي بحق فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها فرج عنا يا الله وارفع هذا الوباء من الأمة ومن جميع خلقك Oh Allah, we ask you by Fatima and her father and her husband and her children Oh Allah, that you lift this pandemic from the Ummah of Muhammad and from all of your creation, Ya Allah. We ask you by those who were born in Sha'ban. We ask you by Hussein ibn Ali, the stranger of Karbala. And we ask you by the loyal brother Al-Abbas ibn Ali. And we ask you by Ali ibn Al-Hussein, Zayn Al-Abideen, peace be upon them, Ya Allah. That you return all those strangers who are now 
stranded back to their homes and you lift this tragedy and this affliction from the believers and you protect our brothers and sisters and our elders and our parents and mothers and grandparents and grandfathers Ya Allah my dear brothers and sisters do not neglect the dua wherever you are and always pray for your neighbors for your friends and family before you begin to pray for yourself and I thank you once more those who are tuning in and I thank Imam Hussein TV and the brothers who are working hard in bringing this to your homes to your mobile phones to your laptops and I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh